是这样的。所以说，所以 ，and then we can sort of walking away. And I said,、uh, "Excuse me, sir, sorry,、uh, your name, please." So he gave me this look, and he said, "Baruch na biya dar." Bombay, I can push you. Na look, bata de. So Bombay, I came, but、uh, I sort of got his、uh, nephew. I didn't get him. <laughs> but your training is in that case in Bombay. You did a lot of documentary features, traveling with Sayyid Nakvi. Now, even in writing, for instance, it's very hard for people to move from non-fiction to fiction. Very, very few writers in the world have managed to do both with equal ease. Was it tough for you to move from non-fiction to fiction as a format, or and how different is the grammar between the two? Grammar is really different.、Um, but somehow, it wasn't. It, The journey was tough for me. I, I never got. A lot of people used to tell me, "Nahi hoga." I said, "Kaise hoga?" You doing documentaries? I said, "Do some television serials." I really actively and seriously considered that, but then I realized, no, that grammar is completely different. Also, so that I don't want to go there. I said, "Let me just try this." And I think it was easy because I began with a film that was in some sense autobiographical. So what I needed to do was just take the the experiences that I was going through as a documentary filmmaker, me and my friend Rajan Kapoor. We were in in、uh, Afghanistan for months doing documentaries, and、yeah. I just started sort of putting what was happening with us in some coherent way, <laughs> stringing them together in a story. And you know, actually, what what really started the whole process, I remember, was this was uh, uh, this was a few months after 9/11, and we were in Afghanistan, and、uh, there was this one、uh, prison in Afghanistan in the Panjshir Valley, the Panjshir Valley. Now is it was probably a four hour, five hour drive away from Kabul, but in those days when the bombing was still on and every road had been bombed, it used to take about ten hours to drive from Kabul to Panjshir. Panjshir was near the Tajik border, and there was this prison over there called Doab. It was called Doab because it was a natural prison which was surrounded by river on two sides and mountains on the other side. And even if you escape from the from the jail, you couldn't go anywhere. And all the Sort of Al Qaeda and the foreign mercenaries who were fighting with the Taliban were being put there, and this was the sort of sorting area for people to be shipped to Guantanamo. So every journalist wanted that was ready to give the right arm to be there, and there was a lot of check journalism happening in those days in Kabul. They were paying a lot of money, but people were not being allowed to go there, and、uh, we desperately wanted to go there, and we went to the to、uh, the mujahideen who were in charge at that one time, and we said we're from Hindustan, and they said, "Ah, Apple is angry." They were they very warm towards Indians.、Um, yeah, yeah, just say Amitabh Bachchan, like it, it, it happened in Kabul also. Also, and they said, "Yeah, we'll take you." They put us in a jeep, and for the next ten hours, we rattled along the road and reached、uh, Panchir. And、uh, we reached the prison. They opened this gate. We entered this court in Yemen and Pakistanis. And they were just looking at us like, you know, what did these guys come here for? And we had this camera in our hand, and the Afghan soldiers were all around, of course, with their guns. And what happened was that slowly, obviously,、uh, we started going towards the Pakistanis, right? Because they're the only ones who spoke a language. And there was this one guy, Khalid,、uh, who was、uh, who spoke very well and very, very articulate. And he started chatting with us, and we would say, "Okay, let's do an interview." We said, "Okay, let's do an interview," because for them it, the game was over, right? They were being shipped off to Guantanamo, whatever, whatever the hell was going to happen with them. And they started chatting. The moment we put the camera on, Khalid was the was one person. The moment the camera was off, Khalid was another person. And we kept like, you know, for we spent the night there in prison because there's no way you could get back to Kabul.、Uh, Khalid and his uh, uh, fellow prisoners cooked korma roti for us, fed us.、Um, We slept there, spent another day with them, and from there I, I could get the sense that these guys. The moment you roll the camera, he would just you know spout the Taliban ideology. The moment you switch the camera off, he was just a normal guy, regular guy, talking about normal things, films, everything. Anyway, we started moving. Uh, uh, we said, okay, we have to go back now, and we were going back when suddenly Khalid came running、uh, behind us, and he said, "Mujhe please ek phone karne dijiye." Those days we were carrying our satellite phones. There was no other way of communication. एक फोन करने दीजिए एंड एक्टली गॉट शिट गैट गया इज तालिबान को यू नो हुज ट्रैकिंग दिस डैम यू नो सैटेलाइट फोन एक्टिंग यू नो ऑन बट इट कॉम्स कम ऑन अस इज दैट नहीं हम आपको फोन नहीं दे सकते एंड ही वाज रियली प्लीडिंग एंड द जेलर ऑफ 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 दैट प्रिजन ही सेड दे दीजिए लेट मी मेक वन कॉल वी गिव हिम द फोन ही मेक्स हिज फोन कॉल एंड आई रियलाइज दैट ही इज कॉल्ड हिज फैमिली इन पाकिस्तान एंड दिस फैमिली थॉट ही इज डेड फॉर द लास्ट 3 इयर्स इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दे वर हियरिंग 
and then he asked for his daughter and his daughter came on the phone and I saw this, he was like 6 feet, 2, 6 feet, 3 by 4 feet and I saw this so called most dreaded terrorist in the world crumble into a sobbing, weeping father and that just triggered this thought in me that there's, there's, there's a story behind everything, there's a story behind you know uh, every person even in this sort of 60,000 soldiers who comprise of Taliban and that's the beginning really of the idea of Kabul Express and from there it all started when I started putting down my experiences about you know was created a fictional character based on Khalid and so I guess in that sense it was easy for me uh, uh, having you know writing the script of course after that wasn't very easy because I came which over. film is this is this available for people Watch Kabul Express. Oh, no, the, the, the documentary. documentary. The documentary is a film. Uh, there were two. We we did uh, two documentaries in, in Afghanistan. One is called the Taliban Years and Beyond, which actually is, has been shown pretty much on Discovery Channel many okay. times. So was this commissioned by Discovery? This was not commissioned by Discovery. This was actually commissioned by another international producer who later gave it to Discovery. But is there any way that the audience can watch these two films? It's that you part of the Discovery catalog. So I guess probably uh, not on YouTube. It's not, they don't put it on YouTube and also I think it's also part of the Discovery Channel uh, documentaries which are very, they're topical right, so after a point Taliban years and beyond as a film I don't think is relevant today because it was talking about what was happening right. there. Journalism on that. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and then there was one film called The Titanic Sinks in Kabul which was about the um, environmental destruction that 25 years of war had caused in Afghanistan. So, um, so that's how then Kabul Express was. Um, uh, forgive me, Kabir, I'm asking you to repeat a couple of things here. Because this conversation. All these places, you know, whether it's Afghanistan or Bosnia, all these sort of what many call the heroes of the world that I choose to travel to, um, were not half as dangerous as what happened to me in Bihar. Uh, I was I was a cinematographer for that documentary, and this was a documentary that was uh, Channel Four from UK was doing, and I was traveling with them, and uh, they were what they had done was they had, uh, they wanted to do a, a, a documentary on what they call the gun culture of Bihar and the and the sort of nexus between politicians and and gangsters and they, they were, were naive because they went and actually gave this application to the high commission uh, you know in London and they said there is no nexus between politicians and gangsters in Bihar so there's no basis of your documentary they rejected their visa but these guys just landed up there on uh, in India on a business visa and we were doing it literally undercover and we had, at that point in time, these guys had chosen two case studies. Uh, later, both of them went on to become uh, MPs. Uh, surprisingly. Yeah, uh, Papu Yadav and Anand Mohan Singh. Now, Papu Yadav and Anand Mohan Singh, for those who are from Bihar, know that they live in, they are in neighboring constituencies. And uh, so, uh, Papu Yadav got very excited when he realized that there's a crew from the UK who wants to come and profile him and interview him. And he was trying to, at that time, project himself as this, you know, politician, not as a gangster. So, um, we landed up at Papu Yadav and Papu Yadav is there in his khadi kurta and you know, followers in kurta with no guns and the UK producer saying, where are the guns? Where are the guns? And, and, and listen to it, he doesn't want you to show him as a gangster, he wants to be protected as a politician. This guy is strutting and fuming, no, but this doesn't work for us, this doesn't work for us, there's some random two gunmen or three gunmen with him. And Papu Yadav has planned this whole day where he's going to go to some village and give them some, you know, food and clothes and <laughs> and, and spreading it, you know. And we go this, go there to this village, and it was quite a drive from the main town. And it was a very dramatic setting. Actually, this incident changed. It, it got called uh, because of this incident that changed the title of the of the film. And it was this village, little hamlet, literally of just a few huts. And it was like a mud embankment uh, through battlefields, and it just wide enough for ambassadors to go through. And these we went through about say it would be about a kilometer and a half, full of battlefields. You stepped into the battlefields, you're going all the way to your uh, till your hips. And we reached there. We did all that. We coming back. It was twilight. The sun was set, so it was a little dark. And I remember I was in the on the, in the first car on the back seat and we were driving out and there were it, the whole all the paddy fields were ringed with forests and suddenly in the forest I saw this like about 10 12 little sparks go off and a second after that bullets slammed into our car the first one went through the neck of my uh, driver and he slumped right there and the car stopped and suddenly we realized that Anand Mohan Singh had realized that Papu Yadav is roaming around without his gunmen and he won't get a better opportunity than this and had encircled this whole place and was firing at us and he didn't know we were there and this 
UK producer who was suddenly being fired upon by like 50 gunmen. And you could see, so he jumped out of the car under the ambassador and these bullets were slamming into the ambassador and all the cars behind and these villagers came running out with bows and arrows uh, firing back at them. These, you know, one, another gunman, gunman of uh, Papu Yadav got shot. There were just some two guns left. And you could see gypsies coming full of gunmen and they were screaming and shouting and they were trying to create fear. They were coming screaming and shouting. Through the paddy fields? Yeah, no, on the, they couldn't, from the outskirts were protecting us actually. From the, on the outskirts of the paddy fields and the jungles and you know, literally 10 gunmen jumping out of each gypsy. And just these sparks going off with their Kalashnikovs firing at us and that went on for some 40 minutes. I, till date, I do not know what stopped them from coming in and, uh, and just finishing us off. I have a feeling it's us. I have a feeling they realized we are there. Because I had actually I switched on the camera. Right? So this is this is actually recorded? It's all on camera. So I jumped out, I switched on the cameras, just you know, literally pushed it at the uh, air of the car. And all this is there. So the, the, the whole documentary called uh, Shootout at Sunset. Um, and sort of begins and ends with, with, with that. Yeah, so I think that's definitely been probably one of the most dangerous experiences right. that I've been to. So you take all these experiences, you put together a script, you come to Bombay, you clearly want to change your life <laughs> in the sense that you want to be in the mainstream films. Did the fact that you met Yashraj very early on in your career, did that give you the cushioning that a lot of people perhaps would not have? Totally. I think. Uh, once I was armed. How did you and Aditya Chopra meet? And ask, I'm asking this question purely because a lot of people in Bombay believe it, which doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, actually it's very strange. So I, I, I land up in, in Bombay with my Kabul Express script um, cushioned by the fact that my wife was earning quite a decent packet at MTV as an MTV PJ. So we had this house and, you know, Khana Pina Chadrada. And I was doing these documentaries, of course. But I had this script and I kept going around meeting people, you know, so-called patrons of alternative cinema. Uh, and I got a lot of gyan. No money, but lots of gyan. Uh, everybody liked the script. They said, ah, what's it? What's it? It's just a hero. So I don't know. I mean, we'll, let's, let's go and what find you alternative. Yeah. yeah. So he, they said, uh, I remember one very, I, this one I won't take names. No, sure, sure. But there's this, this company which is, and was headed by somebody who's actually really known as somebody who, you know, uh, supports different cinema. And um, I went there and they had newly been sort of incorporated as a public limited company. So I thought they'd be flush with funds. And Kabul X was worth some 2-3 crore budget film. Um, I went to them and I said, uh, they said, I sat down and he said, um, so what's your proposal? I was like, uh, my, my propose to make a film. <laughs> you know, what is the proposal? He said, no, 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 you don't understand. The proposal is what is your budget, what is your hero, what is your so that distribution territories of the and after revenue model guy, you know, territory wise. I said, I'm supposed to know all this. Why have I come What's to your job? Yeah, so he says, Nay, Nay, wo to acha, acha, apko ye sab nahi malum. I said, Sir, script hai, main kahani suna deta hu. So he says, Nay, actually, script, see, Monday to Friday, we proposal discuss karte hai, Saturday ko hum script sunte hai. So, and this is no exaggeration, I'm not trying to like this, uh, make you guys laugh. So he said, Saturday ko hum kahani sunte um, and uh, so I go back on Saturday and uh, I narrate the story of Kabul Express. And he gets very impressed. He says, Very nice. He says, They get two kisam ki film. One is a pre Friday film, one is a post Friday film. Like I said, I could So he said, One is a release of the release of the release of the release of the proposal value of the release of the release of the release of the release so we cut the end of our best safe for that table profit. table profit. Ego the post Friday film to the release of the air of never put it to pay to cut the air to pass out there to up key film job post Friday film. Take us a post Friday film. So he said, Nay, they can have a company cajo chapter. I was a pre Friday film guy. So he said, Ah, eat the rica hair. Ah, Arjun Rampal go there. Your film will be pre-Friday. I didn't get to the manager of Arjun Rampal to the manager. So, I was completely new. I knew, I didn't know a soul in Bombay. I didn't know anybody in the film industry. The first person I met was Arshad Barsi because Mini and Maria were great friends at MTV and they became family. So, Arshad is the first actor I knew. And then I met John, 
through somebody and, and they did Kabul Express for him and he said, when have you been as, you know, um, uh, producer I'm on. And that's something I really, I think, you know, re really need to give credit to, to John because uh, John and Arshad both came on board way before when Yashraj came on board. Uh, you know, Yashraj came later. In fact, Yashraj, so, okay, so I'll tell you how. So I went, I went through all these experiences, never going to Yashraj because Yashraj, so I see film about that. So, uh, and everybody said, are you mad? What are you going to Yashraj for? It never happened. And even who are you going to meet in Yashraj? There's nobody there. So, uh, but unknown to me, there was one, uh, somebody I'd met who took my script and gave it to Adi. Adi at that, in, that point in time was looking for scripts outside of his comfort zone. And somewhere like two, three minutes into the conversation, I realized oh, this is a serious call. I said, okay, I'll, I'll come. Expecting that whenever I go, there will be some, you know, maybe a Bakra crew outside the gates and they laugh at me. I said, okay, I'll go. And there was this appointment. Uh, so I said, great, can we get a writer? He said, what do you want to get a writer for? So I said, to write the script. He said, but I've just read your script. I, said, I was, I never wanted to be a writer. I was just putting down because I had no money to pay a writer, right? So I just kept putting down my experience thinking, whenever I get a producer, I'll get a writer. He says, no, I like what I'm reading. This is the film I want to make. So sir, uh, it's a six of Jagran Film Festival. Yes. I think it's very good. It's a kind of festivals and uh, showcases for the cinema. Ke liye, uh, these are very important. There are different kinds of cinema, different kinds of films that we don't see here. They are showcased here. There are interesting conversations with people and presentations. Hoti so it's a very good platform. And, so, uh, and, uh, today, who is here? Yes, my name is Mayank Shekhar. Ke ek, uh, conversation hai. Uh, generally, ek, uh, you know, talking about films, uh, Generally, what are you doing in the film? In my work, an overall conversation. In the Jagran Film Festival, is there any special film that you have seen? Actually, I was traveling outside of the country, so I haven't seen one film yet. I've come here, so I'll see, check out what film is, and then I'll check. So, what's after Phantom? Chutti. Because I've done two films back to back, you know, Bajrangi Bhaijan and Phantom. I didn't take any break in the beach. I literally went from one to another. So, I'm working for two years non-stop. So, now I'm taking a break. The break is important because I write my screen plays myself. So, I need that time to write. I'm thinking about two or three ideas. I'm going to develop them. And finally, I'll decide which story I'll work on. So, sir, how much time will it take to see your next production? अभी कोई ऐसा मतलब डेफिनेट शेड्यूल नहीं है लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि डेढ़ दो महीने में एटलिस्ट मुझे ये पता होगा कि मैं कौन सी फिल्म कर रहा हूँ एंड देन आई स्टार्ट वर्क करें। हाँ बस एंड ऑफ दिस ईयर आई शुड बी एबल टू टेल यू कौन सी फिल्म बना रहा हूँ मैं किसके साथ बना रहा हूँ। मुझे जो इस फेस्टिवल की सबसे बड़ी खूबी लगती है वो ये है कि वो सारे देश में अलग-अलग जगह पे फेस्टिवल करते हैं सिनेमा को लोगों तक इंटरनेशनल सिनेमा को सारे देश के सिनेमा को देश के कोने-कोने तक पहुंचाते हैं फिल्मेकर्स और ऑडियंसेस के साथ एक जो नाता बनना चाहिए वो बनाते हैं और इसलिए मैं चाहता हूँ कि इस इस कि इनका जो रीच हो वो पहुँचे लोगों तक और लोग यहाँ पे आके फिल्में देखें और एंड आई विश्वास ऑल द बेस्ट से इंटरेक्शन सेशन में अभी स्टूडेंट्स के साथ इफ़ाम नॉट हो क्या कुछ कुछ अगर थोड़ा आप संक्षेप में बता दें हमारे ऑडियंस को बढ़िया सा इंटरेक्शन रहा गांधी जी की सिन उसके बारे में ये सेशन था क्या उसका रेलेवेंस है क्या हमारा एक्सपीरियंस रहा और एक बहुत ही लाइवली इंटरेक्शन यंग ऑडियंस के साथ हुआ जिसके लिए मैं इनको बहुत बड़ी बधाई देता हूँ ज़रूर मैं चाहता हूँ कि ये इस तरह का जो एक इंटरेक्शन है वो सारे देश में फैले हर यूनिवर्सिटी टाउन और शहर के अंदर ये होना चाहिए और जिससे कि भारत के इंटीरियर्स में भी लोगों को एक सिनेमैटिक एक्सपीरियंस अलग तरह का मिले। एक झांसी की रानी पे फिल्म बनाने का प्लान चल रहा है। वो भी एक ऐसी ऐसा फैसिनेटिंग कैरेक्टर है इंडियन हिस्ट्री के अंदर जिसका कोई 
विश्व के इतिहास में कहीं मुकाबला नहीं है सो दैट इज द नेक्स्ट इट है जैसे ही बाहर आएगा पता चलेगा नेक्स्ट ईयर नेक्स्ट ईयर चलिए थैंक यू सो मच